Hey guys, this is Paul from Where Nerdy Is Cool, and this is my after the upload video. This is a video that would usually only be available to my Patreon Patreon members, and those would be the ones that subscribe at the $5 a month level, and I only have one Patreon patron. So in order to get more, I wanted to show you the special content that I create for them. So that's why this video is available to everybody. So. Hello, and this is After the Upload. Um, what I'm gonna do, the premise of After the Upload is that a couple of days after I upload a video, I circle back and I cover some of the comments I've received on the video, uh, whether they be on YouTube or from social media or from email, I, I like to cover those. Sometimes the videos I've done, I have had to leave things out for brevity, so sometimes I circle back and talk about those things. The most recent videos I have done, uh, installing the OctoPrint, the how to connect your laptop to your 3D printer, and most recently was the do you need to cool uh, your OctoPrint server, or more, more directly, do you need to cool your Raspberry Pi 3 uh, if you're running OctoPrint. So those were the last three. I've been slacking a little bit on the uh, after the upload videos, but now I'm coming back to them. Uh, I've had a lot of interesting comments over the last couple weeks. One question, <laughs> this is fun, uh, why do you keep wearing a hat? Well, I'm bald, I'm under an LED light strip, so other than that you wind up with a very shiny head. So uh, in order to uh, appease my audience and make my color correction life easier in post editing, <laughs> I wear the hat. So I'll cover that right away. Um, while we're speaking of uh, Patreon, like I said, I'm, a lot of people are out there using Patreon as a means of gaining support from the community. Uh, I have a Patreon page. It's patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. I have two levels. There's the $1 a month level where, hey, you're just, thanks for doing what you do and here's a buck. And then I have the $5 level where you appreciate what I'm doing and in exchange, what I'm gonna do is after I do a video, I'm gonna give you access to this video, which is after the upload. So you guys get a little bit of, you know, a little additional one-on-one -on -one time with yours truly. So there it is, so that's why I'm doing that. So I've covered why I'm wearing the hat and I'm gonna cover a couple of the early uh, comments I've had on the videos that I did. The, uh, the Octoprint tutorial, I got some interesting uh, feedback on that. A lot of it's been very good. Uh, I, well, let me rephrase that. I have not had any negative feedback. Uh, one person had indicated that there was other ways to image the SD card outside of the way I mentioned. And that's cool, that's fine. There's a lot of ways that you can format and image an SD card. I went with the 132 program for two reasons. Uh, one, I know the person that developed it. Uh, I, it was his son, and then as his son's gotten older, he's taken it over. So uh, that's one reason. Uh, number two is I've used it before and I've had great luck with it. So, and anything that helps prevent you guys from formatting your C drives, hey, you know, that's, that's okay by me. So uh, in Octoprint, I got some really nice messages from people saying, hey, you know what, I appreciate you going step by step. You, you laid it out pretty well and I was able to get Octoprint working and I'm loving it. Uh, I also got some additional feedback from uh, other people asking about some additional advanced features. Uh, I know uh, I had four people that contacted me about web cameras that did not work uh, upon their install. And I'll share with you guys as well that, you know, if I can answer it, I'll certainly fire away, ask me in the comment section or shoot me an email like these guys did. But on the Octoprint website, they have their own discussion board section. And I have found a lot of answers in there. And by all means, I know it's kind of cliche to say, well, go to the website and go ask. They really have a fantastic you know, discussion going on in there. Uh, some very helpful people helped me. Uh, I had a lot of uh, Linux-like questions because I don't know all these root commands. I'm a Windows guy, I don't know Linux. Uh, or, they, or the Raspy, rather. So they've been very helpful to me. So I'm just saying to you guys that if you run into some advanced features that you don't see any videos, your Google searches come up blank, go to their website, go to their web form, say, hey, forgive me for I am new, <laughs> and ask your question. They've been very responsive to me. The second video that we're gonna cover and go with some of the feedback uh, was how to connect your laptop to your 3D printer. And as I put in the thumbnail, I had put down that this was a viewer request. Uh, I had several people, uh, well, I'm trying to remember how many it was. Was it two or three? That doesn't matter. But they basically said the same thing. They said, you know, I'm a complete newbie to this stuff 
And some of the things that you're showing, like the Easy ABL and some of the other videos you've done, you've covered how you do the connection and how you make these changes, but I'm stuck at the connection part. Um, is there any chance that you can kind of explain how this all works for us new guys? Absolutely, no problem. We all started off as new guys and gals, so why not? So uh, I got some good comments on that as well too. I got some nice uh, emails from people that appreciated that. You know, there's a lot of advanced topics on 3D printing on YouTube, but sometimes it's nice to have just the basics covered. So I'm hoping that was helpful to our newer users. The other one, my most recent video is, this was the most fun to me. Do you need to cool your Raspberry Pi 3 if you're running Octoprint on it? And again, this was one of those things where I'm scrolling through Facebook. I'm, I'm a notorious Facebook, I'm sorry, Facebook. I'm a notorious YouTuber when I'm at the gym. Uh, I get on the treadmill, I want to spend an hour on the treadmill, and I'm distracted easily. So if I get on YouTube and I get sucked into a video, that one hour goes away and I start getting a little skinnier. It's taking a while, but I'm trying. So one of the videos that came across my feed was they were showing the new uh, Raspberry Pi 3 B+, and they were showing the capabilities of it, and uh, one of the things that they were testing was the, the thermals. You know, if you max this thing out, how hot does it get? And then what's the best way to cool it off? And I linked the video in the uh, in, in my YouTube video so you guys can check it out if you wish to. And I have a lot of these Octoprint servers everywhere. I have one on all my printers. And it took me a while to warm up to the idea of using an Octoprint server to begin with because my first 3D printers were Ultimakers. And Ultimakers only use the SD card. They do, they do not recommend doing the USB printing because well, depending on the computer that is on the other end of that USB cord, a lot of computers, if they're idle for a certain amount of time, they start shutting off the USB ports and the hibernation. And that's what happens. So sometimes what will happen is you've got a print going and you come down in the morning after thinking you got a print waiting for you and the computer went to sleep and <laughs> you have, you got nothing. But Anyway, I say that to say this, I decided to go to Octoprint because I was really impressed with the whole idea that you had the idea, the ability to remotely look and control you know, your prints remotely. And so I warmed up to it and it's, it's worked out very well for me. So, let me circle back, I bird walked for a reason, okay? So anyway, my thinking was that, you know, I've never bothered to look, it never crossed my mind that how warm do these things get? I have no idea what kind of load Octoprint puts on them. So that's what led me down that path to create that video. And as you can, if you haven't seen the video already, shame on you. No, seriously. But it's it's worth watching because the the thing is with the, with the Raspberry Pi 3 is that we, I'll give you the long and short of it here, the 3D printing with Octoprint does not max it out. It doesn't even come close. The, the temperatures, the highest the temperatures go on the bare card is 53, 54 degrees Celsius. On a Raspberry Pi 3, when you start getting into the realm of over 70 degrees, 75, 80 degrees Celsius, that's when things start throttling and, and, and start turning off on you. So you don't have any danger to face there. But what was remarkable is how just putting a, a heat sink or even the, you know, the fan that I put on here, you know, the $12 fan, brought the temperatures way down. So if you're one of those people that like to have your stuff run and tip top and, and as, as, you know, God, I can't get the word out. You know, if you just want your stuff to run as well as possible, geez, I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of money to get this thing super, super cool. So having said all of that stuff, the, the fun part was, like I said, it, it didn't take much to, to get some very good measurable re results. The biggest heavy hitter you see on the Octoprint server, especially if you're running a time lapse, is when the print is done and the time lapse is being converted into a video file. That's when you see the 100% 100 CPU spikes, probably for a good, uh, I think on mine it was a good two, three, four, five minutes, depending on how long the print was. I was doing all these test cubes, and as you can tell, um, you know, we, we, we did quite a few, uh, but you definitely saw the spike and then the temperature went up accordingly. So, so to me, that was a really fun video to do because I love empirical data. Uh, the hard part was trying to get all that data to a level where you guys could follow it. It was interesting. 
All right, I'm gonna wrap this up now here. I'm kind of wiggling around in my chair here, so I know it's time to get going. Uh, couple things, you can follow me on social media. I'm always posting pictures or updates of things I'm working on there. Facebook is where nerdy is cool. On Instagram, where nerdy is cool. And my webpage is where nerdy is cool.com. I thank you guys for watching. If you guys aren't subscribers already, please consider becoming so. I don't want you to miss any of my videos. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the whole point of this video is for Patreon members to be able to get like a sneak peek of and feedback of the videos I've been working on. I hope you decide to become a patron. It's patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. I appreciate your support, whether you decide to become a patron or not. So that's it for this time. I got a couple other videos I'm working on this week. I hope to get one or two of them out anyway. So I thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your feedback and comments and suggestions. Please leave them in the section down below. Thanks for watching and remember, you know what's coming, right? This is where nerdy is cool.